<laughs> good morning. I mean, good evening, brothers and sisters. This message is actually tailored <coughs> towards the younger audience. All right, we have two baby boys, one of them in the basket and one in the manger. Both are escaping because of a distressed king. One baby in the arms of Pharaoh's daughter and the other in the arms of a young mother. One to save the Jewish people from slavery and the other to save them from their sins. Children, do you know who these two people, these babies are? Yes? Good job. Yes. Baby Moses and baby Jesus. Let's read a part of both stories to see the correlation. There are actually so much similarities uh, in, uh, between both of them, but we're just going to focus on one. The Old Testament, Exodus 1, verse 8. Then a new king began to rule in Egypt. And later in verse 9, it says, The king said to his people, Look, the people of Israel are too many, and they are too strong for us to handle. We must make plans against them. If we, uh, if we don't, the number of the people will grow even more. Then, if there is war, they might join our enemies. Then they could fight us and escape from the country. And then in verse 22, it says, So the king commanded all his people, Every time a boy is born in, uh, to the Hebrews, you must throw him into the Nile River. But let all the girl babies live. And then Exodus 2 says, There was a man from the family of Levi. He married a woman also from the family of Levi. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw how wonderful this baby was, and she hid him for three months. But after three months... She was not able to hide the baby any longer. So she got a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar so that it would float. She put the baby in, uh, among the tall grass at the edge of Nile River. The baby's sister stood a short distance away. She wanted to see what would happen to him. Then the daughter of the king of Egypt came to the river and then in verse 6, we see the king's daughter opened the basket and saw the baby boy. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. She said, this is one of the Hebrews' babies. Now let's look at the story of the baby Jesus. In the New Testament, we see in Matthew 2, verse 3, when King Herod heard about the new king of the Jews, he was troubled. Just like we see in Moses, the king was troubled. Here we see a king who is troubled. And we see how the, the wise men promised that they were going to come back, but then they didn't. So we see in Matthew 2, 16, when Herod saw that the wise men had tricked him, he was very angry. So he gave an order to kill all the baby boys in Bethlehem and all the area around Bethlehem who were two years old and younger. And in verse 13, it says, An angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Get up, take the child, his mother, and escape to Egypt. Herod will start looking for the child and kill him. Stay in Egypt until I tell you to return. So we have four Gospels. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I started to read the Bible on my own, I was always getting confused because I would read Matthew, then I would go to Mark, and I'm like, it's the same story. Then I would go to Luke, and it's the same story again, and John. And I, would, I was very confused as a young Bible reader why this was happening. And the more I would read it, I realized that it's the same story, just a little bit differently. And then later, I actually found out that it is the same story. It's talking about Jesus, but from four different perspectives. So we have Matthew, who wrote about Jesus. Then we have Mark, who wrote about Jesus. We have Luke, who wrote about Jesus. And then we also have John, who wrote about Jesus. Now we see Matthew. Matthew's readers were actually the Jewish people. So he's trying to link the, his, the, his perspective of Jesus, he, certain things that the Jewish people would grab a hold of. For instance, Moses. Now, Moses was a hero to the Jewish people. 
He was a hero, and it must have been one of the most popular bedtime stories during that time. Now, when Matthew writes about baby Jesus, he points this out. How Herod ordered that all the baby boys to be killed. That must have gotten the attention of the Jewish listeners because that's exactly what happened during the time of Moses. Even when you see the verse when he talks about Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus fleeing to Egypt, that too was to get their attention and bring Egypt into those verses so they can point it back to Moses. Therefore, I believe that when the Jewish people would hear about the baby in the manger, it would send them back to the baby in the basket. Both saviors called to save. One to save from slavery, and the other to save from sin. Now, those who would follow Moses were freed from Egypt, and those who would follow Jesus were freed from sin. Moses was not able to take them to the promised land because there was only one who can truly take us to the promised land, and that is Jesus. He is the one that could take us if we would follow him. Baby Moses was like a shadow of what was coming, and that is baby Jesus, the Savior of the world. This mystery of Jesus was hidden in the Old Testament. And Matthew's good news, which meaning the gospel, was read, it started to open it up. This mystery was starting to open up. To better understand this, I heard this great analogy. The Old Testament and the New Testament. It's like walking into a room that's, that you could barely see. Very, uh, uh, it's very dark and you can barely see. So you're stumbling and you're kinda, you kind of know what's in there, but you can't really tell. And the New Testament is like a light switch that goes on. All the things were already there, but now you can see them better. So that's what the New Testament is trying to do, is just pointing to Jesus and explaining that in a better light. But when we read now, when we read the Old Testament, we must look for all the ways that it's pointing to Jesus. So every time you read the Old Testament, try to see how it's all pointing to Jesus. Even books like Esther, that with no mention to Jesus... But Esther was willing to sacrifice her life for her people. Jesus did sacrifice his life for all people. The baby in a manger. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. As the light shined, we see those shadows. And one of those shadows was baby Moses. Let's rejoice this Christmas that we are no longer in darkness and that the light of the world is here. Amen. Let's pray.